So hello everybody and uh, welcome to the uh, ESDR uh, kitchen. My name is Elish Prefer. I'm from the Department of Dermatology at the Tel Aviv Medical Center. And on behalf of uh, the ESDR board and my co-chair, Professor Bernard Homi, I'd like to uh, welcome you all to uh, this new molecular cuisine episode of the uh, ESDR kitchen. I'd like to uh, remind you that uh, the, uh, the program of the, the kitchen and, uh, and all previous episodes are available uh, on the uh, ESDR uh, website. So as you know, the, the molecular cuisine uh, episodes are uh, presented by leaders in the field who uh, share the personal journey to uh, scientific uh, discovery. And today we are particularly uh, delighted uh, to have with us uh, a giant uh, really in the field of uh, the genetics of rare skin diseases, Professor Alain of Nenian. Alain is a professor of genetics at the Necker Hospital for Sick Children uh, in Paris. He's the director of a research laboratory dedicated to the uh, diagnosis and treatment of genetic skin diseases at the uh, Imagine Institute for Genetic Diseases in Paris. He graduated from uh, medical school uh, of uh, Paris 12 and did his internship in Paris. And after his PhD on epidemiolysis bullosa, he moved to the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics in Oxford, where he became a Wellcome Senior Research Fellow at the University of Oxford. He is mentors during this uh, very highly productive period, and we will, uh, I think, hear about some of uh, uh, the products from this, uh, this period, uh, where Professor Mark Latrop and Professor Anthony Monaco Today, his laboratory studies uh, rare and severe genetic skin diseases with the aim to improve the diagnosis, uh, the understanding of the pathogenesis, the care, and the treatment of these often diseases. He uh, is uh, very famous for having identifying the genes uh, underlying uh, recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, the rare disease, Netherton syndrome, and more recently, a subset of Olmsted syndrome. He's not only a very uh, uh, gifted uh, gene hunter uh, is also actively uh, involved in the development of novel therapeutic solutions for these rare skin diseases. Um, is uh, running, for example, a phase one, two gene therapy clinical trial for uh, recessive dystrophic EB, uh, trying to block the IL-4 and IL-13 receptor with dupilumab in recessive hyper IgE syndrome. Uh, is running also uh, some uh, trials uh, aimed at inhibiting the, EGFR, the EGFR pathway in patients with Olmsted syndrome and Pachyonica congenita. And he's using anti il 17 a biotherapy and calicrine related peptidase inhibitors to treat Netherton syndrome. Alain is the recipient of uh, numerous uh, uh, national and international awards, including the prestigious. Uh, Black Pearl Scientist Award of your this 2021. So just before uh, handing it over to Alain, I'd like to uh, remind you all to forward your queries through the, the chat and the Q&A functions. Uh, those, uh, this discussion, the dialogue that we uh, like to have at the end of those talk is really extremely important. So please don't be shy and share your uh, concerns and questions uh, with us uh, through those two functions. Alain, uh, I'd like uh, once again, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, to thank you very much for the opportunity to hear you today. We are uh, really looking forward very much to your lecture. Uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eli. I'm absolutely delighted to uh, take part to this uh, ESDR kitchen today. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. I'm going to, to talk about the, the progress in the understanding and treatment of Netherton syndrome mainly. And if I have time, I will uh, cover our recent work on uh, Pachyonychia congenita. So this is my disclosure. So uh, from the beginning of my research in, um, in uh, genetic skin diseases, we've always uh, tried to start from uh, uh, patients and their families in order to identify uh, the causative genes and to understand the function of these genes, to uh, use this information to improve the diagnosis of these diseases, to develop disease models, to better understand their pathogenesis and to develop new treatments. So we did this for initially for uh, recessive dystrophic EB when we found the gene 
uh, when we find TAP7 collagen as being the defective gene for the disease, then we identify by positional cloning Darius disease gene and then Netherton syndrome, which um, uh, involve very different disease process. And today I'm, I'm going to, um, to talk mainly about uh, Netherton syndrome. So this cartoon, um, which I'm not going to develop for this audience, uh, points to uh, the, uh, the complex uh, structure of the epidermis and Netherton syndrome uh, um, um, is, uh, is causing a, a major defect in the uh, interface between the granular layer, which you see here, and the stratum corneum leading to the premature detachment of the stratum corneum. So this uh, cartoon um, represents um, the granular layers and their interface with the stratum corneum and uh, also uh, depicts uh, the association of a protease inhibitor, Lecti, which is not produced in Netherton syndrome, with its uh, target calicrine-related uh, uh, proteinase. And you see that uh, the association of the inhibitor with its uh, uh, cognate uh, protease is very tight uh, in the uh, basal part of the stratum corneum and becomes weak and uh, leads to the detachment of the inhibitor from its uh, proteinase at pH uh, 5 at the superficial layers of the stratum corneum. In Netherton syndrome, this, this system is completely um, abolished because of the absence of the protease inhibitor lectin. So Netherton syndrome is, uh, is a rare disease with an, um, in, an incidence which is estimated uh, around one in 200,000 births. Uh, it's a recessive disease. We shown by positional cloning that SPINK5 encoding lecti, which is a serine protease inhibitor, is mutated in all the patients reported so far. And that lecti specifically inhib inhibits at least three calicrine related proteinase, uh, uh, namely KLK5, 7, and 14, as well as Elastase 2. And uh, clinically, um, the, the diagnostic relies on a, a triad, which is made of congenital ichthyosiform erythroderma with a specific hair shaft defect called trichorexis and vaginata, and uh, often severe atopic dermatitis-like features, which include eczema, asthma, and food allergy with a, a very severe and constant uh, pruritus with high Ig levels. In the neonatal period, there are life-threatening complications, and uh, including dehydration, infections, and failure to thrive. And later on, there's a wide range of clinical variability, and some patients can develop squamous cell carcinomas, which are HPV positive or negative. So these are our cl a few clinical um, presentations at the uh, uh, newborn period with uh, red and scaly uh, newborns or only um, eryd erythematous uh, er erythrodermic lesions. Uh, the patients are very, very itchy and scaly. They can show uh, marked skin inflammation and most of them will develop a specific hair shaft abnormality, which is called bamboo hair, which is shown on this uh, optical microscopy examination, which shows the invagination of the distal part of the hair shaft into its proximal part. So this is responsible often for um, uh, partial alopecia, and the hair is brittle, uh, fragile, and short. And this is another uh, um, uh, aspect of trichorexis in virginata. And the constant feature also is the development of eczematous-like lesions uh, with uh, oozing lesions here. 
a very um, uh, uh, specific clinical feature is uh, ichthyosis linearis complexa, which refers to these uh, serpiginous red and scaly lesions, which are transient but are recurrent and which uh, occur during flares of the disease. So these are clinical representations of the uh, um, wide uh, variability in the clinical presentation of these uh, patients with here often uh, uh, severe um, redness of the, of the face and severe scaling of the face in infants. But Netherton syndrome is not only a skin disease, it, it um, associates with the systemic manifestations which uh, uh, most often are uh, uh, caused by um, um, the atopic uh, uh, predisposition of these patients. So they develop allergic conjunctivitis and blepharitis, uh, allergic rhinitis, sometimes asthma, esophagitis, and, um, and food allergies. And they most of them has very high Ig levels. So clinically, um, two main uh, subtypes are distinguished. One is uh, is referred as the scaly erythrodermic uh, uh, presentation. The other one is the ichthyosis linearis complexa. A majority of patients will start their life with the scaly erythroderma and about uh, two thirds will develop ichthyosis linearis complexa. In some patients, both forms can be uh, uh, combined, but with a, a predominance of one of them. So as I uh, mentioned um, initially, uh, the disease is caused by a, a profound uh, skin barrier defect, which is uh, due to uncontrolled proteolytic activity. In healthy skin, um, the um, epidermal proteases are inhibited by uh, lecti, which is represented by this blue triangle. Whereas in patients with Netherton syndrome, due to the lack of lecti, these proteases are overactive, especially, especially at neutral pH or basic pH 7 at the, uh, in the granular layer and they uh, cause uh, premature detachment of the stratum corneum, and this allows um, uh, microbes, allergens to penetrate the epidermis. And often we can see uh, in, uh, neutrophil infiltrates in patients with ILC. When you do a skin biopsy, you see a, a massive um, epidermal uh, thickening, and when you do immunostaining with uh, lecti antibodies in the vast majority of patients, you see no detectable uh, staining in the granular layer. So this cartoon represents um, uh, the major histological abnormalities you see in NS patients. You see epidermal hyperplasia with elongated red ridges, which very much look like psoriasis uh, um, histopathology. The stratum corneum with inflamed skin and with uh, immune cell infiltrates in the dermis and with the presence of uh, neutral fields in ILC forms. So uh, after identifying the SPINK5 as the causative gene, more than 200 mutations have been identified so far. And the vast majority of them are loss of function mutations leading to premature termination codons. You can see that they are um, uh, distributed all over the gene. Some of them um, show some founder effects in some populations like Turkey, Finland, or Europe. In Europe, the most frequent uh, mutation is um, um, synonymous mutation, which doesn't change the amino acid, but which leads to skipping of exon 11 and causes a frame shift. So this uh, very uh, naive cartoon represents the uh, proteic uh, organization of lecti, which is made of 15 domains, which are linked by linker regions. Only two of these domains uh, uh, correspond to the classical Kazai 
type um, sequence, which is defined by the presence of six cysteine residues, which allow the formation of three uh, disulf disulfide bonds. In lecti, uh, the other uh, domains are, uh, contain only four cysteine residues, which allow the formation of uh, two uh, cysteine bonds, which result in the formation of this uh, rigid loop, which um, uh, interacts with the catalytic site of the target protease and which blocks, which inhibits in activity. So the study I'm going to describe aimed at understanding the skin phenotype and the systemic response, both at immune system and the allergic response in uh, patients with medicine with uh, ichthyosis linearis circumflex forms and with patients in patients with the uh, scaly arthrodermic forms. So this is the patient characteristic. So we studied 13 patients aged uh, from 12 years of age to uh, 45 uh, to uh, 57 years of age, and uh, including nine patients with ILC and four patients with uh, uh, scaly erythroderma. So we took um, tape strips, skin biopsies, serum, and peripheral blood um, uh, monocytes in order to assess protease activity to perform RNA sequencing, proteomics, serum cytokine profiling, and immunophenotyping in order to uh, integrate this data at the transcriptomic and proteic, uh, proteic, uh, proteomic level. So these data, which are not published, show that when you use, uh, when you extract protein, uh, proteins from tape strips or from scales from these patients, and when you measure the proteolytic activity using uh, sub uh, specific substrate for calicrin 5, calicrin 7, or calicrin 14, you show a marked, you can, you see a marked increase in the proteolytic activity for these four proteases, which is seen in, in, the, in the two subtypes, but which is uh, obviously higher in the patients with uh, scaly erythroderma, which are represented in blue spots, whereas the patients with ILC are represented in the pink spots. For the, and the same results are obtained for the three uh, uh, calicrines. So when you do um, uh, uh, immuno, uh, when you do histopathology analysis in both sub subtypes, you see a marked thickening of the epidermis. Uh, but the main in both types, which is often um, uh, more pronounced in the scaly erythrodemic forms, and uh, uh, what you uh, see, which is specific for ILC, is the presence of subcorneal uh, infiltrates of neutrophils, which you usually don't see in SC. And when you do immunostaining, you confirm the presence of uh, neutrophils by uh, myeloperoxidase staining, which are either subcorneal or in the dermis. But when you uh, do immunostaining for tryptase, which detects uh, mast cells, you see that they are predominant, they're predominant in the lesional, uh, in lesional and non-lesional skin from patients with scaly erythroderma. So when we did transcriptomic and proteomic um, analysis, and when we um, uh, uh, displayed uh, this the ingenuity profile, which represents the most um, uh, uh, modified uh, biological pathway. You see that there's quite a correspondence between transcriptomics and proteomics, which identify uh, the uh, pathways involved in the inflammatory response as being the highest. Um, uh, 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 representative uh, groups of, uh, of genes overexpressed. When you do heat map analysis, the predominant, the predominant modifications 
involve um, interleukin-17 and interleukin-36 pathway, either uh, by showing increase in the level of interleukin-17A or interleukin-17C or F, or interleukin-36 um, alpha or interleukin-36 gamma, but also in their target genes, which include defensins or S100, uh, A7 or A9 uh, proteins and CXCL8 and CCL20. So those abnormalities were more predominant in lesional skin than in non-lesion skin and, uh, um, uh, but, uh, and predominated in uh, scale erythrodermic uh, lesions, but in lesional skin, uh, the changes were comparative with were comparable with the ILC forms. These data were, were confirmed by immunostaining the two subtypes, immunostaining of both interleukin 36 gamma and uh, the target proteins, pr protein S100 S7. And when we analyzed uh, the immunophenotypes of, of PBMCs by flow cytometry in the two different subtypes, we could find evidence for increased uh, um, presence of, of TH17 uh, cells in the two subtypes. Also, this uh, increase was more marked in the scalar trodemic forms. And when we um, separated um, uh, the transcriptomic and the proteomic analysis on the basis of the clinical subtypes, we could see some differences, which means that um, uh, uh, in addition to uh, the inflammatory response shared by both subtypes, the scaliotrodemic forms were showing evidence for increased signaling pathways, including responses to viruses such as interferon pathway, which is which was less uh, pronounced in the in the ILC forms. In contrast, in the ILC forms, there was evidence for increased complement act activation, mainly uh, C3. In mainly in lesional skin of ALC patients in comparison with lesional skin from AC patients. Um, uh, SE patient skin showed uh, a type 1 interferon signature in lesional and non-lesional skin, which is uh, represented here on this heat map with uh, the uh, interferon signaling pathway genes and the interferon uh, target genes, which you see is present in, um, in, uh, in uh, is more pronounced in the SC patients than in the ILC patients, uh, especially in non-lesional skin. And this was confirmed by immunostaining of uh, phosphostat-1 in, uh, in lesional ALC and lesional um, SE skin, but more importantly, in non-lesional uh, SE skin. And we further documented activation, uh, increased interferon alpha signaling by measuring uh, interferon alpha uh, serum level by CIMOA. And you see that it was uh, significantly increased in um, SE patients in comparison with, NS, with ALC patients. And interferon-induced chemokines were also increased in the SE patients in comparison with uh, controls and uh, in comparison with, uh, and, uh, with uh, ILC patients. So, uh, because uh, uh, this, um, this increase was uh, localized in the, in the skin of these patients, we, we conclude that there was, uh, that the interferon signature was restricted to, uh, to the skin and was contributing to skin inflammation. So, um, we, 
further analyzed the uh, cytokine levels of uh, interle interleukin 17 and interleukin 36 in, uh, in the serum of these patients. And again, we could see that they were increased and more increased in patients with AC forms than in patients with uh, ILC forms. And when we perform a more generalized proteomic analysis of, uh, of the serum of these patients, we could distinguish uh, two different signature, a more TH2 signature in, involving uh, interleukin 4, CXCL2, and CCL27 in patients with ILC, whereas a more TH9 signature uh, involving TARC and MDC was seen in patients with AC. So in parallel to these uh, uh, studies on patients, we developed different murine models. Um, some of them were Spring 5 knockout models. The other one was a transgenic Gallagherin 14 model, which reproduced the uh, hair shaft abnormality. But more importantly, the conditional Spring 5 knockout mouse model, which have been generated by Evgenia Petrova in the lab, which is viable, reproduces uh, faithfully uh, this, uh, the human features reproduces the increased proteolytic activity for Galgrin 5, 7, and 14, as well the transdermal water loss uh, abnormalities. And both at the transcriptomic and proteic levels are quite similar to uh, patient's abnormality. So this allowed us to propose this model in which there's a vicious circle of skin barrier disruption and inflammation. The skin barrier disruption is caused by the uh, 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 unopposed gallopin 5, 14, and 7 um, uh, activity, which leads to stratum corneum detachment and protease activated receptor activity, which leads to the production of pro inflammatory signals by keratinocytes, which attract immune cells which are recruited in the dermis and which are activated and which contribute to the skin inflammation. And there's a kind of, of feedback uh, from the um, immune infiltrates onto, um, onto the uh, uh, defective epidermis. So this cartoon allows to identify different biotherapies which can be used to block either TH17 pathway or TH2 pathway or different pathway. And this is why we, have, we and others have been using calicrine inhibitors, which are currently ongoing in two clinical trials, or intravenous immunoglobulins to counteract the effect of uh, microbial uh, aggressions, or targeting interleukin 17 using e either secukinumab or uh, execizumab or targeting um, uh, interleukin 4, 4 and interleukin 13 receptor using pupilumab or targeting TNF-alpha um, using infliximab or targeting interleukin 23 and interleukin 12 using ustekinumab. So each of these case reports show uh, improvement of the patients, but they are limited. So it is obvious that clinical trials are required and that uh, additional pathway uh, uh, deserves to be targeted like interleukin 36, probably blocking interleukin-17 receptor more than uh, interleukin-17 A and F, and blocking uh, interleukin-23P19 specifically with the new biotherapies, and maybe blocking interleukin-31 uh, using um, nemolizumab. So, but in parallel, we are, uh, con uh, we are convinced that repairing the skin barrier defect is absolutely essential. And this is why we and other labs have developed specific Gallicrine 5 or Gallicrine 7 and 14 
inhibitors that the one we published with the uh, Glaxo uh, Smith Klein last year. So we think that in conclusion that these studies showed evidence for common pathway in, in the both clinical subtypes, but with um, uh, still differences, which uh, may um, uh, explain a different uh, response to the different uh, biologics. We do believe that clinical uh, randomized crimes are required and they should account uh, uh, patient stratification. New biologics are possible, but the re repairing the skin barrier defect is absolutely man mandatory combined with anti-inflammatory therapies. So I th think it's too late now to... Uh, uh, yeah, yes, we... yeah, but in, the f in, in one um, sentence, I will uh, invite you to read uh, Justine Basset's uh, recent publication in the GID this year, in which we show evidence for increased act activation of EGF, EGF pathway in patients with pachyonychia congenita and uh, effective treatment with um, overall EGF receptor inhibitors like erlotinib. So uh, these are uh, uh, pictures of this, uh, of Justine uh, paper. So I think uh, I, to conclude, I think that uh, it is clear that gene expression analysis using either bulk RNA as we did, but now more frequently single cell RNA or spatial transcriptomic, transcriptomic would be essential to, uh, uh, to identify new treatments, including drug repurpose, repurposing. And this has been applied for Nathan syndrome, for Pachyosia congenita, and as you know, for other, for ichthyosis, which are listed here. And like the CART-14 um, um, conditions and SAP syndrome. And obviously, this is, I think, this is the way to go to develop disease specific drugs or to use repurposed small molecules or new biologics um, uh, on the basis of very detailed uh, transcriptomic, proteomic, and cell uh, analysis. And these are my acknowledgments to all my uh, current and past. Uh, 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 members of, of the labs and our uh, precious uh, international collaborations. Thank you very much, Anna, for this, this exciting data and findings and uh, for your excellent talk. I'm sure there are questions and uh, Sarah Brown is thanking you. And do you have any idea why the skin lesions take on those characteristic shapes in uh, linearis circumflexa, and do you see this pattern in the mouse model? Uh, thank you, Sarah. That's an interesting question, which is often asked. And in fact, in patients, uh, these uh, ichthyosis linearis circumflexa lesions, the result from the uh, coalescence from the gathering of uh, isolated uh, inflammatory papules which disclaim. And in fact, it's just a fusion of a large number of these papules. And the patients often describe this very well. They say, oh, look, uh, doctor, it starts like that. And then it will lead to this serpiginous lesion. So I think it is just the result of, a, of the fusion of a large number of very closely located papules. And so we don't see ILC in, uh, in mice. We just see uh, uh, scaly erythrodermic lesions on, in plagues. I was very curious that your transcriptomic signature resembles very much the signature seen in psoriasis. Mm -hmm. However, the patients develop IgE and sensitization um, uh, to type one allergies. So, what is the link from an interferon IL-17, IL-36 driven inflammatory pathway towards 
an IgE response. Can you find links? Um, yes, I think we, we've shown that um, uh, Calicrain 5, when Calicrain 5 activates PAR2, it leads to the production of TSLP. And TSLP might be a, a link to IgEs because, as you know, it uh, induces the differentiation of uh, naive lymphocytes into uh, pro TH2 lymphocytes. So I think through the an opposed calibrin 5 activity, which activates PAR2, that might be uh, a, a way to explain the uh, allergic uh, components of the disease, which is absent in psoriasis, as you know. But uh, as you see, yeah. and do you see IL-31 and the upregulation of its receptor IL-31RA? Yes. I, I tell you, 31 is upregulated, yeah. Yeah. Which opens the possibility of using new biotherapies. Yeah. yeah. So I do not see any further questions. We are a little bit ahead of time. I want to give Ellie now the chance to have the final remarks and announcements. Thank you very much, Elaine, again. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. And I'd like, uh, first of all, to uh, once again, very uh, deeply thank you, Alain, for uh, sharing with us this uh, data. And uh, through this data also, we, we, we could get some um, idea of uh, the long journey that uh, a talented uh, scientist like you uh, is making uh, over all these years. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's not only benefiting uh, science, but uh, patients uh, and our patients behind each and every one of your discoveries. And that's uh, something which is um, really very deeply felt in all what you are doing and the way you are doing. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yes, so thank you. So um, we will meet again uh, for uh, our next uh, ESDR Kitchen on the 14th of uh, uh, December, uh, another uh, molecular cuisine episode uh, with uh, Michel Gillier, uh, who will uh, share uh, with us his own uh, journey uh, chasing uh, triggers of skin inflammation. I'd like to um, remind you of two very important deadlines. Uh, first of all, January 10th, uh, this, uh, the deadline for abstract submission to the forthcoming ISID which is due to take place in uh, Tokyo uh, next May. And uh, a new uh, initiative uh, of the ESDR in collaboration with uh, Marie Kay, um, a research grant program. And uh, the deadline for submission to this program is December 9th, so please uh, make a note of that. And um, uh, until uh, our next uh, Molecular Cuisine episode, I'd like to uh, very much uh, thank you all for having been with us uh, today. Uh, wish you a very good day or night, wherever you may be. And uh, goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.